Hello guys, today for the first time ever, we're going to take a look into the BFME Reforge gameplay. If you don't know what BFME Reforge is, it is a fan-made brand new project for the Battle for Middle-earth games in 2D. I'm able to showcase you guys the Isengard faction. But before we're going to jump into it, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like because later on, you might change your mind. Okay guys, so that's not a BFME Reforge gameplay, unfortunately, but it's a BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 on a beautiful map Westwall. We are playing this time the Rohan faction in facing against Mordor. So good against evil El Clasico situation. And I will be able to showcase you hopefully the strength and the power of Rohan and my hidden super OP strategy to beat Mordor in lead game. As you guys know, on this map Westworld, Mordor is extremely strong and Rohan is a very strong early game faction, but you can also change your playstyle and actually try to get very strong with the Rohan faction in the mid to lead game. And that's only possible if you recruit the mounted heroes like Eoma and Theodin. Luckily for us, on the map Westworld, there are plenty of creeps. So we can easily get our Theodin to level 4 to unlock the Glorious Charge and also easily to get our Eoma to level 4 to unlock his Horse Lord leadership to get additional DPS against enemy monsters like Trolls, Drummer Trolls, Nazgûs and also the Witch King. And also, by the way, I'm sorry for this, <laughs> what I just did to you guys, because it's April Fools, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully you guys don't take it too seriously. Hopefully you're not gonna unsubscribe to the channel, because that's not what I'm aiming for, trust me on that one. So our goal early on is to deal economical damage, and when you actually want to move on with the Rohan army, you want to make sure to not uh, separate your peasants, because peasants are the second worst swordmen in the game. They are a little bit stronger than orcs, but they are weaker than soldiers, and also weaker, obviously, than Urukai. And for that reason, if you split them, you actually lose a lot of momentum, and you don't want that to happen, but... Oh, Meriodok Brandybow, please don't die. But luckily for us, the good thing about Rohan is, Rohan is the one faction that can use the resource buildings as production buildings. It means we can recruit swordmen from the same buildings as we are also getting money from. That's really dope, trust me on that one. Okay, so that's actually looking pretty good for us. We have a, a lot of map control. Look at that. We have one, two, three, four, five outside farms. And uh, next one, next we will be building up the stable. We need a little bit more pressure. And look at this. You know, you have such a... I mean, I'm not even spamming that many peasants. You can literally do that twice as much. You can literally outspam any faction you want. Especially on a map like this, you get additional settlements. And each settlement, after it's built up, you can, you know, just recruit one extra peasant. Look at this, workers. <laughs> Look at this. The lumber mill workers are going to war, ladies and gentlemen. Do not let them forward. Back off, fiend. And the economical damage we dealt to this mortar is actually kind of insane. So the steeple is building up. We are so rich, dude. We are so rich. And what we're going to do is we will be recruiting, of course, one Rohirrim. And later on, we also will be recruiting Eoma and Theorin. And creep a lot with those heroes. To get them to the power spank, Elma and Theodin, they get insanely strong once they are level 4. Glorious Judge and Host Lord is extremely efficient. And you might need that later on. So basically, you can try to rush Mordor early on. But if it's not working out, uh, you will struggle. Okay, so we are in a good spot. We are in a very, very good spot. We have even a level 2 peasant. You know what's up. That's very good. Um... From the PowerPoint menu, we can also skip the hill and go for the Elven Allies if we need to, but I'm not planning to rush early on. So basically, I want to play it a little bit slow and give him the chance to recover, you know. Uh, I don't think he's rich. I think we actually hurt him a lot and he needs some time to recover. That's good for me because I can use this time to actually scale into the mid to lead game. And, you know, I know many, many people have actually struggled when they play Rohan against Mordor. They are like, oh, Shanks, I don't know what to do. Uh, Mordor feels so strong. Rohan has no chance. And hopefully, I will be able to showcase you guys the power of Rohan faction against Mordor. Uh, on any map, Rohan is a very solid faction. has plenty of opportunities. You can have, like, different build style, different army style. 
You can go for Heroes, you can go for Early Row Hit Him, you can go for Legolas, Int Mood, Int Rush, Aragon Rush, the Peasant Spam. Like, long story short, you have so many options with the Rita Mark faction. Okay, now we can deal economical damage. We will be waiting for our Elma, the Horse Lord of Rohan. And the one thing that is important and you need to keep in mind is... Um, in order to get enough levels with your heroes, you need to make sure that they are getting the last hit on the creeps. So basically, if Elma gets the last hit on the goblin layer or a work layer, he will get way more experience than when he's sharing experience. Sharing experience is like, you gotta imagine that like there is a set amount of experience for killing something. And if you share it, it's like a 50-50 situation, you know? But if you lasted it solo, you don't share it with anything, you will get way more experience. Oh, please. Okay. So stop, stop. Press SSS. That, you know, you see, that's very important. This way, Elma got the last hit on the creep, on the work. And after creeping a full layer, Elma is going to get from level 1 all the way up to level 3. And then we need only one more level to get the Horse Lord unlocked. Just like it's that. Oh, that's going to hurt me. Uh, we might need to use heal, but I don't want to really do that. Elma, come on, finish this off. You see, boom, level 3, just like I told you guys. And now we can also get the last hit on the goblin there. Make sure to not lose any horses. But as he's busy dealing with the one Rohirrim, we are actually doing a lot of stuff on the other side of the map. And also, there we go. Beautiful, guys. Very, very good start. Very, very good start. Very, very good start. Dude, we are also so rich, dude. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Let's get this outpost too, just why not? We can also build archer range there to recruit some uh, yeoman archers to get the fire arrow upgrade purchase from an archer range level 2. And we won't recruit any more archers after that one. I will show you guys the power of the mobile um, army style of Rohan. So Rohirrim with Rohirrim archers together in combination. There is no counterplay. So basically if you get all leadership bonuses unlocked with Elma and Theodine with Glorious Charge, and we have the combination of Rohirrim and Rohirrim Arches, which is pretty expensive, but we can afford that. As we have great amount of map control, we can actually shine bright like a diamond. And we're gonna do the same now, basically, with the King of Rohan on the other side of the map. So doing it slowly, creeping slowly, 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 to get enough experience to get massively strong. So we are aiming to get Glorious Charge within the next one minute, then we can actually rock and roll. And, you know, Pro, uh, Mordor will struggle quite a lot against that. So everything that he does, Nazgûl's, you know, basically you gotta understand that Rohan is a faction that is designed to counter the Mordor faction. So basically, your hero Eowyn, the shield maiden of Rohan, is actually so incredibly impactful against Mordor. Her smite ability chunks a Nazgûl in the Witch King even to 50% HP. So, and she costs only 1100. You know, and Rohirrim are cheap, you can trample the Oryx, you have a lead game skilling army with King Theodian and Ilma, the new king of Rohan. Oh, be careful. Again, leave the last hit on the Theodian, that's very important, to get more and more experience. And we are almost level 4, guys, just like that. You see, after creeping two layers, we have also Elegoras now on the field, the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. And there we go. Bibidi babidi boo boys. Bibidi babidi boo and that's how strong Rohan can get in a few seconds. We have so many power points collected. I want to actually go for the Elven Wood just in case he might use the Tainted Land and then I can cover this. I will never use it by myself. I'm gonna just, you know, save it for the for the case. Uh, he might use his. So here's Haradrim. That's good for me because Haradrim's weakness are heroes and Legolas is one of the heroes with the highest DPS in the game. And also, if you don't know, you know, when you get Legolas to level 4, he has the Trine Archers, which you can also use on your Rohirrim Archers. You can make them this way stronger. Armory coming up next. We can buy heavy armor for We can literally do anything we want. Anything we want. I'm assuming this Mordor is trying to get stronger with the trolls. And he's kind of playing it slowly, which he should, against, you know, at this point of the game, sending trolls out by one by one is not going to achieve too much, besides feeding me a lot of power points. Okay, it doesn't really matter on this one. We have Eoma level 5 already. We don't need any more levels. But Theory needs one more level. Ain't? Ain't? Come on, Theodin King. Yes! There we go! 
Dude, that's so funny. <laughs> From creeping only, you know? Everybody would say, hey, but Westfall is a Mordor map. Hell no, brother. Hell no. It's actually a Rohan map. Trust me. And it feels so refreshing. I think it felt like that I, in the last days, I was actually only playing with evil factions, especially with Isengard. I think the amount of times I played with Isengard, and not on purpose, by the way. As you guys know, I always, most of the time, actually, I pick random, and I get whatever... You know, I pick whatever I get, but in this one, I wanted to pre-pick the Rohan faction because, uh, you know, to showcase you guys how strong Rohan can be. So basically, we have the Fire Row upgrade purchase. Now we can start recruiting some Rohan marches. Uh, here's some Oryx inside the base, but our Mary Rock Brandy Box should be easily able to deal with that. No problemo. Come on, Mary. You can do that. In our Legolas having a phenomenal time in the middle of the map, shooting everything he sees, everything is getting one-shotted, and the enemy doesn't stand a chance. Okay, so we have three power points almost in the bank. We will get a lot of power points once we are ready to go, guys. So this is way slower than any other Rohan build you can do. Oh, ooh, a troll has lost his way. Hey, would you look at that? Would you look at that? <laughs> I will hoax strike you. This twins, like Frylock Brothers. Pew! There we go, boys. There we go, there we go, there we go. Legoras, you did it, my friend. You did it, you did it. Level 4. Hey, man, you know what's up? It's time to level up my Rohirrim Arches even more. So, basically, in 3 Arches, because Rohirrim Arches are actually considered as like an Archer Battalion, and you can also level them up with King of Rohan, King Theorin, when he's level 6. So when you get level 6 Theorin and level 4 Legolas, you can level them up multiple times, get additional levels. And I think if you have seen different videos on my channel, then you know the level advantage in this game is massive, right? If you get a level 10 unit, level 10 unit is like as strong as like 5 level 1 units. You know, that's how impactful the levels are. And that's why it's also very important to keep all your highly leveled units alive throughout the entire game. Not only economically important, but also in terms of quality of your army. Dope, 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 dope. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are so rich, dude. We are so rich. I mean... <laughs> oh, man. He cannot really do much about the situation with orcs or haradrims or trolls, you know? He can... Uh, and that's the good thing about this situation for us is even though he might be strong at some point of the game with darkness and because we are mobile we have the chance to engage and disengage whenever we want to we don't never have to overcome it it's the weakness of the combo battalions for example if you play Isengard against Mortar and if your combos if trolls engage on you disengaging is most of the time no option for death and glory but with the Rohirrim and Rohirrim marches you have the chance to build Engage, catch, chase, run away. You have so many options. And look at the burst damage, dude. Look at the... I mean, to be fair, he has also no Dramar Troll nearby. But even if, even if Dramar Troll, that wouldn't change too much. We have just too much leadership as we are talking. I mean, he has some rune soldiers. I see that. But it shouldn't be changing too much. Oh, look. That's why, that's why we have Elven Wood, boys. That's why we had Elven Wood. Just to cover this hindered land in time. You can heal them and go back into the genes. The power points are rising to the sky. As we are doing that, we are losing map control. But we can, you know, I might actually recruit Gimli later on. <laughs> you know, go for something else. Aragorn, Gimli, we can do whatever we want. And also, when you have Aragorn, you can keep Aragorn with your army of Rohir Marches and make them even stronger. Aragorn gives you 50% more damage if you do that. Six power points collected. Let's call the ends and let's throw the rods on the Baradur. The ends are going to war. It is likely that they are going for their doom. The last march of the ends. And about PFM Reforge, guys, I don't know when this is going to be released. I, I think it's extremely slow and... I have my own opinion about that matter. I think, you know, I don't know. Like, I have no clue. I think not many people have clue about how long it would normally take if you actually uh, start working on a game. But after 40 years, if all you really see are pictures and images, uh, you know, that doesn't really give me too much hope, to be honest with you guys. 
Like, if you see only, hey, guys, we have a three beard design. Our oh, guys, we have a Lorian warrior design. Uh, but there is no moving around units or animations or, I don't know, gameplay. You know, this kind of gives me personally the feeling that the development is not even 30% done yet. So, you know, and that might still take uh, three, four years. And for that reason, I would, you know, I would expect it to come out, but I wouldn't uh, set on it in short terms. And I would use this time to actually play the uh, existing BFME games. In this case, BFME 1 on the patch 2.22. And, you know, just get your fingers warmed up until BFME Reforge comes out. Because I get every time when I'm streaming on Twitch, I get the question asked many, many times. Hey, Shanks, when do you think it's going to be the release of the BFME Reforge? When do you think it's going to come out? And, you know, that's not happening since like two days. It's happening since the last two years that I've been asked the same question. And, you know, answering the same question makes you lose your hope at some point. You know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, it's going to come soon. It's going to come soon. It's going to come soon. Then they have always some problems. The war is happening problems. Pandemic is happening problems. Uh, the, you know, the sun is rising problems. Raining problems. Oh, be careful. Okay, we gotta use the heal, but it's on cooldown. We need to spam it. We are so strong now, boys. We are so strong. And by the way, guys, this guy was actually trying to build a siege wall. <laughs> I mean, in which universe would this work out? Like, building siege works when there is zero protection to keep those siege works alive. Maybe he was hoping that I'm not paying attention, that he can take down all my vaults while I'm busy trying to take his own base. But guess what? We will have Gimli, the son of Cloyne, on the field very, very soon. We gotta use the aggressive stance. I was wondering why they're not attacking the level 7. Rohirrim is no more. Too much talking. Not enough focus on the gameplay, guys. Sorry for that. His base is falling apart. And I think he has outposts. Yeah, he's he's not dead yet. He has outposts. And look how many power points we collected. I didn't even pay attention. So we have the heal, draft, Anduril Sword, Alvin Wood, and Elias. And on top of that, four power points collected. So we are only six power points away from the EOD. But you know me. I, I'm not a player who likes to win with EOD or Palrock. You know, I'm trying to always win, if it's possible, without them. Oh, there is a random troll actually chilling around. You know, he's like... Leave me alone. We can capture this now. And yeah, Gimli doesn't have too much structural damage. He will need some time to take down the slaughterhouse. But it's okay. We have also now the shields. The night shields. Oh, he used this. We can cover this. No problemo. Or darkness. But what you want to buff? I think he has no more units on the field. And you see, that's the thing. When you play against Mordor, the, the most important stage of the game is the early game. If you can shut him down early on like we did, you can actually snowball quite hard. But if you don't deal any economical damage against Mordor early on, it's very hard. Because by the time you get like an Eoma on the field, you might have actually a Nazgul. And an early Nazgul is a nightmare for any faction to deal with. And Siege Works is a good call, but the thing about the Siege Works is if you have no trolls guarding those catapults, they will get one-shotted. Like, catapults are very squished. They are like glass cannons, they are hitting very, very hard. But when they when they get you know when they're being focused on, they will die in a second. And the outpost is gone. Oh, we can destroy this one as well, no problemo. And what is he actually what does he have still? The outpost at the top right side, I think. Keep your senses alert. Be on guard. Okay. Um oh look at this. Would you look at that? We need to give them fire arrows, boys. Get them out. The Oryx, the Black Oryx. So that's also something from the patch 2.2. If they get to, or to level 2, the Oryx, they unlock the Bloodthirsty, which means they will be dealing passively 25% more damage. And for that reason, they are also changing their model. Oh my goodness, this battle tower is hitting like a track. We need to use actually Atelas there, you know? Hold on, I'm gonna use Atelas. Boom. I mean, he's fine, he's fine. To Aragorn with Blade Mask Anduril is something else, guys. You know, there is no not a hero... Or not a unit beside Balrog eventually that is hitting that hard. The DPS is something else. We must defend our country. Okay, so now we need to just destroy one more outpost. Oh, he's gonna call it GG, boys. GG well played, my friend. Was fun to play this. And you see, the Rohan power. Glorious charge, Eomer leadership. 
little bit April Fools. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a track. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.